Welcome back Year 11s. Here is a tutorial for your Week 4 homework. We are answering a question from the Power and Conflict Poetry Anthology. Today I will help you plan your answer and then you will have 35 minutes to write up your own response in exam conditions. If you have extra time in the exam, that's closer to 45 minutes. As you can see, we have quite a detailed set of steps to success for this question. The first thing we do is read and annotate the question. As you know for this question, you're always asked to compare two poems from the cluster. For AO1, you need thematic comparisons. You need to select decent, weighty quotations to support your interpretation. For AO2, as always, we are looking at the how. The poet's use of language, form and structure to create meaning and its effects on the reader, how it makes you feel as a reader. We always use our subject terms for AO2. And of course, AO3. This is when we're making links to context. That might be the writer's method, message or the historical, social context of the time that the poem was written. So first things first. Our question today is, compare the ways poets present the effects of conflict in poppies and one other poem from the power and conflict cluster. As always, we annotate this question. Our key word is compare. That is our skill. All of our AO1 marks are for comparing in this question. We are then looking at the effects of conflict. So already I'm thinking about maybe the aftermath of war, the after effects of conflict, not necessarily the horror of conflict for the poems that are set actually in a World War I or World War II or any other war setting. Then of course our named poem is Poppies today, then we get to choose another one from the cluster above. This is worth 30 marks. The second step that we do once we've read and we've annotated our question is to read and annotate the named poem on the page. We're looking for three points and at least three, maybe four, five, six weighty quotations. As you can see, I have already begun by annotating this poem with some contextual information. Poppies by Jane Weir is from a collection of poems called Exit Wounds that were published in 2009 by Caroline Duffy. You know her from our anthology. 2009 is a post-Iraq, post-Afghanistan war context where lots of families were receiving news about their sons, daughters, family members, friends that had been out to war in the early 2000s. We also know about Jane Weir that she was a textiles designer and this has influenced her writing. So as you can see, or as you already know, throughout the poem, there's a lexical group of textiles, pinned, making tucks, darts, pleats, anyone who does textiles will be much more familiar with this. An ornamental stitch. All of these words we can link to her and her hobby, profession as a textile designer. We also have here linked to the poem Poppies that this poem is from a woman's, a mother's perspective of war. And for me this is very interesting because it's very unique. Most war poems that we read are written by soldiers, usually male. And this is a unique, more domestic perspective to help tell us about another side of war. A mum who sent her son away and, potentially, he never came home. The other thing to annotate straight away is the title Poppies. And we all know that we wear poppies for Remembrance Sunday, Armistice Sunday, the 11th of November, to recognise the people who have been lost or fought in previous wars. There are lots of connotations of poppies. We know about them fields after World War I where the poppies grew in the fields of Europe. So already we know quite a bit about this poem. 
This poem is a dramatic monologue, that is the form, so I will make a note of it here so I don't forget to mention that. That means that it is written in one voice, this time from a mother's perspective. That is shown through the personal pronoun I, used all the way through the poem. And also the direct address of you. Your. When she is speaking directly to the son that she sent off to war. The use of the your kind of shows the absence of the sun throughout the poem. Then we get to the stanzas themselves. Three days before Armistice Sunday and poppies have already been placed on individual war graves. Before you left, I pinned one onto your lapel, crumped petals, spasms of paper red, disrupting a blockade of yellow bias Binding, binding around your blazer. Sellotape bandaged around my hand. I rounded up as many white cat hairs as I could, smoothed down your shirt's upturned collar, steeled the softening of my face. I wanted to graze my nose across the tip of your nose, play at being Eskimos like we did when you were little. I resisted the impulse to run my finger through the gelled black thorns of your hair. All my words flattened, rolled, turned into felt, slowly melting. I was brave as I walked with you to the front door, threw it open, the world overflowing like a treasure chest. A split second and you were away, intoxicated. After you'd gone, I went to your bedroom released a songbird from its cage. Later, a single dove flew from the pear tree, and this is where it has led me, skirting the churchyard walls. My stomach busy, making tucks, darts, pleats, hatless without a winter coat, or reinforcements of scarf, gloves. On reaching the top of the hill, I traced the inscriptions on the war memorial, leaned against it like a wishbone. The dove pulled freely against the sky, an ornamental stitch. I listened, hoping to hear your playground voice catching on the wind. And I always like to make a note down here that the ending is actually quite ambiguous. They don't tell us what happened to the sun. We don't actually know what happened. My reading of it is that he's passed away and he's not coming back. However, your reading might be slightly different. Then as we trace back through the poem, you already would know what kind of quotes you're looking for if this came up as your named poem. There are lots and lots and lots of images in the poem. So kind of from stanza one and stanza two. So you've got her pinning onto his lapel, the poppy. And then the salad tape on her hand where she's getting the cat hairs off his outfit. And she's smoothing down the shirt's upturned collar. And I think that these are good as very domestic images. Images from the home. Which again are quite unusual for a war poem. Definitely contrast to poems like Exposure by Wilfred Owen, Charge of the Light Brigade, Bayonet Charge. And this is linked to it being from a mother's perspective. However, interestingly, these very domesticated images completely contrast to the war language lexical group throughout the poem. So blockade there, bandaged connotations of injury. And then towards the end here, the reinforcement, sending more troops in. So we have the domestic image we also have some war imagery. And so here you have contrast between the two. Going through, there's also towards the end this image of a bird released from its cage and a dove, which again comes back here as well, the dove in the sky. 
we know about birds, connotations of freedom. So this is a strong image. This could also be a metaphor. Went into your bedroom, released a songbird from her cage. Maybe it's anger that she's actually releasing. Then as well, another very important quotation in this poem is here. The world overflowing like a treasure chest. A split second you were away, away, intoxicated. So you've got this simile here. Excitement, like a treasure chest, overflowing with goodness, with gems, with jewels. And then the intoxication as well, which we can link here. Both show excitement for war. Potentially patriotism, wanting to serve for one's country. Maybe arguably naivety, naivety not knowing what were to come. Then if I think about the structure of the poem, there definitely a change. So here we have a memory. She's remembering when her son left that house. And then later as well, you've got here where it's led her in the church by the memorial. So I would say here we become into the present day. We're with our speaker in the present. There's also other structural features. There's lots of enjambment um, here, for sure, throughout the two stanzas. And the effect here for me is it increases the pace and it definitely adds to this sense that it is a mother retelling her story, retelling her truth about the effects of war. You could also argue as well that the break here in the line, the physical space between them, could reflect a breakage within the mother. Then, as you will see from the ends of the lines, this poem is written in free verse. No regular rhyme scheme. So the stanzas are of unequal length. Some short, some long, some short again. And it really reflects a chaotic nature, a lack of control in the poem. And the craft could represent the mother's perspective, her mental state since losing her son to war. The only other structural point to make is the sejura. So here, I find it interesting, before intoxicated, really foregrounds this sense that he was intoxicated with ideas, excited, maybe naive before going off to war. And then at the end here as well, the pause, I listened, pause, hoping to hear the, your playground voice catching on the wind. And for me, this really sums up the tone of the poem, the sad tone that it ends with. Now, once we've annotated our poem, we can move on to step three. Ask yourself which poem explores similar topics. So you go and you have kindly given a list of the poems that you've studied. And I've already gone through this myself. So I'm not going to compare it to Ozymandias. It's not a good comparison, thinking about the effects of conflict. Again, London's about conflict, but it's not a good comparison with poppies. Again, the prelude is about conflict, but a different kind of conflict. So I'm not going to use that. My Last Duchess, similar. That's more um, family conflict, wealth conflict, marriage conflict. Charge of the Light Brigade, okay, we've got the effects of conflict, lots of people die. But I still don't think it's the best choice. Similar with exposure, effects of conflict, you've got loss of patriotism, loss of religion, loss of life. But it's still not the best comparison. Storm on the Island, again, based around conflict, but not strong. Bayonet charge, similar. Remains could work well. You're looking at the effects of conflict when someone's come home. You're looking at PTSD. But I actually think war photographer would be a really, really good comparison here. Think about the effects of conflict, and again, it's set at home. 
tissue, the emigre, checking out my history. Again, all conflict poems, but not quite suitable. The other strong comparison poem would be Kamikaze. Could both of these ones are thinking about family and the effects that war has on a family. I'm going to now plan out a response using War Photographer and Kamikaze as my comparison poems. Don't forget on your plans you will be adding in quotations and your AO2 references. So, I like to do plans just like bullet point plans with my paired poems. The first one I could look at is comparing with Cam Mikazi. Both of these look at the effects of conflict. Both of these look at the effects from home of what war has. War photographer is my other option. And again, all three poems. War pho Ooh, awkward. Photographer. And again, all three poems. Think about these voices of people left behind by war. The mothers, the daughters, the families, the wives, the photographers, the professionals. Then we plan our responses. For Kamikaze, I think my first paragraph would be that both poems explore the effects that war has on families as well. The mom, daughter, wife. I think my second paragraph would be that they both explore loss and this idea that your son might be physically lost from war or more metaphorically lost in kamikaze you know the dad the husband returns home but that lack of pride that shame that breakdown of relationship ends up in a feeling of loss and i think that my third point would be something about the perspectives so that both use unique perspectives, speakers, voices in their poem. So you've got the mother in poppies, you've got mainly the daughter, but also other, in kamikaze. If you'd rather do war photography, you prefer to choose that poem, then again your plan's going to be quite similar. My first paragraph would be about both explore the aftermath of war so for poppies that's towards the end of her poem how she feels after the war's over the war photographer is all the way through coming home in that red room developing the photographs and how they feel after the war you might look at setting and to be fair you could use it for kamikaze as well about the domestic setting the home in all three poems. Here you've got the image of the red room developing the photographs. You've also got images of the Sunday newspapers, the broadsheets, very typically English images. And then again, you might talk about the different perspectives. So both have, you know, this time it's a bit different. It's not family and family, but different perspectives. You've got the mother, and you've got the photographer, a professional who's seen terrible, awful things, and the guilt that they now feel, I guess. Okay, now that you've got your plan, you need to add your quotes, you need to add your AO2, your AO3 information, and then you've got 35 to 45 minutes to write up your response. We always start with a comparative thesis statement. This shows Mr and Mrs Examiner that you know that all the way through that you are comparing these poems. We start with both. So both poets. And then please name them. There's nothing worse than not knowing what poems you're talking about. So both poets, we're and and then your chosen poet. Explore, and then like any other GCSE question, we're using the words from our question. So explore the effects 
of conflict. And then you've got your similarity, but we now need to show that we also recognise that they do this same exploration of this same theme, but in slightly different ways. I'm going to go with the perspectives here. So whilst we uses the perspective of a mother who has lost their son and then chosen poet uses and what did they use to tell their story after your thesis statement you do your three paragraphs using the frame the structure that we've given you it's very good to end with a conclusion briefly summing up the messages from both of the poems once your homework is complete, please hand it to your English teacher on the given day. Good luck. Year 11.